bought four of these standard olive trees from Morrison's the supermarket about four years ago. And they've been really good plants. I bought them to add some height to my little box garden and they've stayed there for four years and they've stayed out all winter and I've not had a problem with them. We have fed them during the summer months but during the winter we've just left them alone and they must have coped with temperatures down to about minus 10 or minus 12. So I've been very pleased with these plants. However, when I look back at some photographs of when we first got them, I noticed that they are starting to suffer a little bit. The leaves are less green than they used to be and they've gone a bit straggly. And I think it's because they're in pots and it's probably time for some fresh compost. So. I'm going to give them all a treat and repot them into slightly bigger pots. And in the course of doing that, I'm going to have a good look at the roots and see if they're actually pot bound. The pots that they originally came in were this size. And as soon as I got them, I repotted them into these slightly bigger buckets. And now they're going up in the world. So let's see how we get on. A little bit of advice for you. If you're going to repot a big pot like this, I would say do it in situ because they are quite heavy and it's going to be even heavier to move when it's in this big pot. Now I do have a sack truck over there to help me to move them a little bit, but broadly they are where they're going to stay. When I repotted them the first time round into these bigger buckets, I put some stone chips on top to suppress the weeds. And I'm not going to waste those. I'm actually going to put those with the crocs in the bottom of these pots to help with the drainage. Because if you think about the climate for olives, they probably come from a place where it's gritty, stony soil with not many nutrients. And nevertheless, they still manage to live for hundreds of years. The first thing I'm going to do is tip the olive over onto this big wooden board and rescue these chips before they get mixed in with any soil. I think I might put my gloves on actually. That's better. Just remember they also put some weed fabric on there. So that can come off, it's done a good job. I always think when you're putting a plant into a pot, the less competition it's got, the better. So the more you can do to suppress the weeds, the better. It also helps to retain the moisture on a dry, sunny day. Dust pan and brush. to get this olive out of this pot. I don't know how tight it is, so this is probably where I do my impression of James and the giant peach, and at the same time, do me backing. Here goes. I'm gonna tip it over, give it a bit of a thump. Loosen it up. And then we shall get down. Let's see if we can get this pot off it. Oh. That wasn't too bad actually. Now let's have a look at the roots. Yeah, that's pretty pot bound as you can probably see. And actually quite damp, probably because it's in a plastic pot, but there are drainage holes in the bottom. I noticed that I only put a couple of bricks in. That was probably for stability. I was probably worrying about them blowing over. What well, there are no crocs. I think that's something I'm going to do differently next time. So, a damp pot bound olive. You can see it's reached the edge of the pot and it's probably struggling for nutrients. It's been in this soil for four or five years and we have been feeding it, but I suppose there are limits. There's a little earthworm there. On top of the banana. There we go. So, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tease a lot of this old 
used compost off the roots and that will give you the opportunity to touch fresh compost and make new roots there's even quite a large root going around the top here as you can see right let's get this dead compost off all right so i think that's going to do i don't want to make it a bare root plant completely we shall leave it at that now here's a pot and it's going to go in now it was sat at the top of this one and let's see where it sits when i offer it up it's a good eight inches below the surface so that's going to be need to be brought up a bit to about that level which i'm not worried about because that will give me the opportunity to put lots of fresh soil compost around the base and give it a chance to produce lovely new roots which will feed the top i've already put some pretty big holes in the bottom of this plastic pot next thing i'm going to do is put some crocs over those holes and add back those chips I've got one crock over each hole there and really it's to stop the soil draining away and help the water to get out break that one a bit Now, I shall put this in the bottom for extra drainage. That's going to do the trick. Let's offer it up again. Yeah, I need about four inches of fresh compost beneath this root ball. grow more I wonder if they'll pay me for putting their product in my vlog I suspect not free bag of compost wouldn't go amiss though if I was a proper gardener I'd produce my own but uh, anyway might be a bit too much in there let's see no, that's going to be about right now I want it to be pretty central and I think that's about right and I'm now going to backfill the gap around obviously with some more fresh compost and all the time I'm doing that I'm going to make sure it remains vertical because nothing's going to look worse than one of these in a pot going off in an angle finish this bag off first So that's going to do it. Started off with half a bag, which has gone in. And I've got about half a full bag left. So my, my maths tells me that that's had a full 50 litre bag of compost inside of it. And they were about three for 10 quid in Asdas. I ought to start using the local garden centres rather than the big supermarkets. Yes, I shall make that commitment. I'm keeping this in a sheltered position against this wall, out of the wind, until it's had the opportunity to put roots into that new compost and give itself some stability. When I bought these, they did have canes, but I've just taken those off. And actually, I don't think putting a cane into a root ball is going to serve any purpose whatsoever so i'm just going to keep them out of the wind in this sheltered corner against this lovely brick wall which will absorb heat all day and keep them in a mediterranean climate all night i might top dress this after i've watered it i have left about two and a half three inches of space above the top of the soil because i like to get water on i don't like it to run over the side uh, but i think there's a little bit more space there for some more compost
Incidentally, if you want to know what effect repotting these has, subscribe to my channel and come back in a few weeks. I'll give you an update. I'm hoping that this new soil is going to make those leaves come back and I will start feeding them as well. Three more to go. As I'm doing this, I'm thinking about mycorrhizal fungus, which is something that's become all the rage. Monty Don uses it all the time. And apparently you sprinkle it on the roots and it helps it make contact with the earth around it and absorb the nutrients better. Some of this compost is quite compacted in the bag, probably because it's been stacked up on pallets, possibly because it's been in the bag for a while as well. So I'm just breaking the lumps up get some air into it and let the roots grow into it. Spent compost, it won't go to waste because I'll use it as a mulch around some of the borders. And it has actually got some root matter in there. So that's got to rot down anyway and produce some nutrients. Everyone's talking about plastic. Um, I will use these again, I promise. Uh, so it's not single use plastic on this occasion. If I look after these, I'll be able to reuse them time and time again. I might even grow some courgettes in them. As I put these black chips into the bottom of these pots for drainage, I'm quite pleased that I've been able to get a second use out of them. Very sustainable. When you're checking for vertical, it's always a good idea to step away because you can't really see it from up close. And I may well invest in some decorative stone chips, possibly green slate, which I think will set this off quite well with this green stone effect plastic tub. I'm gonna tidy up before I show you the finished result, which is four lovely olive trees lined up in a row. If you've enjoyed the video, I hope you have. Please do subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and the notifications bell.